Hello there, this is the lesson on musical elements, the SMART lesson, the first one, and it's lesson two on the board, and we're looking at the SMART level. So elements of music are the basic building blocks of music. So if we, if we want to talk about music, we need to understand all of these things so, so that we basically know what we're talking about. And the first one is time and rhythm. So the top five elements, the first one is time and rhythm. So things to do with time. Um, so first of all, like music and uh, dance and drama, they take time to perform and time to listen to. So you can't really say you've heard a piece of music until you've heard the whole piece. Um, just like you can't see you've seen a whole play or a film until you've seen the whole thing because you don't know what's going to happen at the end. Paintings you can see all at once but you probably want to spend a lot of time looking at the detail if you're trying to get the most out of them. So it takes time to hear a whole piece of music. Music is a time-based art form. So Beat is probably a word that you use quite often when you talk about music and a beat is a steady sound like a pulse. So it never changes. Sometimes it might get faster or slower in a piece of music when the music, the mood of the music changes, but it's the steady thing that we dance to that we want to tap our foot to and here is an example. So steady means it's always the same length. So the, the next thing is called meter or time signature. And in music we have all the, the beats are organised normally into groups of fours or groups of threes. And there are other ones as well, but these are the most common ones. And what that means is that the first beat in a group of four will have a bit of a stronger sound, They'll be the, that'll be emphasised or accented and everything that happens fits into those four beats. So the melodies might start on the first beat, they, the patterns in the music will fit into four beats. Let's have a listen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's nice and steady, just like the beat was. In fact, that is the beat. It's just the only difference is the first one of every four is a bit louder. Here's an example in three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The meter or time signature has an effect on the type of dance that you might do to a piece of music. Long and short sounds. If this one is a beat, so that's a group of four beats. So that would be the four four time signature, and that would be four quarter notes because you divide it up into quarters. You might have heard about something called fractions, but I'm sure you know that if you had a nice cake to um, share, then you could cut it up into four equal pieces. If you had eight people to share it against, you might have to make smaller pieces. Each eighth would be half the size of each quarter, so there'd be two of them for every quarter. <laughs> So the effect of that is it's twice as fast. The notes are half as long, so there's you can fit twice as many in. Now we can do that again. We can half them again, cut up your cake into very thin slivers, and have sixteenth notes. So that's all about beats and patterns and uh, time signatures and long and short sounds. So what is this word rhythm? Have a look at how to spell it as well. 
this pattern, some of the notes look like they're long and some of them look like they're shorter. Now let's have a listen. So that was a pattern of long and short sounds um, that fit into a beat. That was a four beat pattern. One, two, three, four. That makes the music more interesting and exciting sometimes if you want the music to be exciting. If you're making, you're the person who's making the music up, if you're the composer, let's just check some of the things we've learnt. So rhythms have long and short sounds in them. I think that's true. A beat is a steady, even sound that we can dance to. So that's the word beat. So if you wanted to know the difference between beat and rhythm, and some people mix those up. So a beat is the steady bit that everything else fits into. And the rhythms are the ones that's got the different long and short sounds to make them more interesting and exciting. So rhythms make the music exciting and more interesting. True. Rhythms make patterns and fit into the beat. Also true. OK, that's the first element. Second one is called timbre. Now that's a French word that we use to describe different types of sounds. So the difference between wooden sounds and metal sounds, the difference between a violin that's being played with a bow and being plucked, um, the difference between an idiophone and a membranophone, or between two different types of idiophones, like a, a wood block and a cymbal. But let's see what we know about these instruments or what we can find out. So wooden sounds are made by, well, trumpet is a metal instrument. It's made of brass and we blow into it. The glockenspiel or the xylophone. Well, let, one of those is wooden and one of those is metal. So let's try the first one. Ah, so the xylophone is the wooden one. And it's got a lot of wooden keys and those keys are different lengths. The shorter keys are the higher notes and the long keys are the lower notes. A bit like a keyboard, you've got the white keys on the bottom row and then you've got a pattern of two and three, which you can't see, but they're there. Two and three of the black keys on the keyboard. So that has a special timbre. So ascending was another word that you saw there called going up and we'll look into that a little bit more later on. So if that if the xylophone is wooden then the glockenspiel might be the metal one. Yes and this time you can see the keys are actually white and black. Let's have a listen. So that's a ladder of notes going up, the pitch is going up and pitch is our next element. So let's see what we can learn about pitch. If you remember from the lesson on sounds, the low pitches have the waveforms that are spread out a bit more compared to the higher pitch. And that's because this is a picture of the vibration going backwards and forwards. Still at a low pitch is going to be like 100 times a second, so pretty fast vibration. That's your low pitch. And this one that might be a thousand times a second. So it is a, it is a lot faster. Um, so let's have a look into this word ascending. We've got that word here again, going up and then de descending, going down. So let's see what happens. That's a nice ladder. That's what we call a major scale, which you'll learn about later on in pitch. And that's ascending. So what does descending sound like? You can see the steps going down. Now you, those two words are really good for when you're writing stories um, because ascending can be all sorts of things like hills or stairs or uh, lifts or mountains and Obviously descending, you can use that word if you're describing what's happening 
in an exciting story as well. Element number four is called texture and it's all about the layers in the music. Sometimes you have a lot of layers going on, sometimes you might only have one layer. So in this example you can see to start with the bass part, the bass layer, is playing on its own. And that's got a nice steady two note pattern by the look of it. And then the chords come in. You can see there's three notes being played at the same time. So chords are when you play two or more notes at the same time. And you can see them changing, the pitch is going up and down a bit. But there's different lengths. Some are short, like little dots, and some are longer. So that's going to have a rhythm to it before the melody comes in. And the melody starts with a little pattern that's ascending, going up. Then it saw some longer notes there. And then it wobbles around a little bit. And then it goes up again, like our ladder. Let's have a listen. You might recognise this piece. Now, that, those were three different layers going on, and they all blended together to make an interesting overall sound. The melody was quite low, so even though it's lower than some of the notes in the chords, it still stands out. So that is a piece of music that tells a story. It's about a boy who gets caught by the King of the Trolls, and this is when He's in the Hall of the Mountain King. So think about it. There's probably one pop song that you know well. There's probably lots that you know well. But think about your favourite pop song at the moment. and Think about the layers it has. Does it have a lead singer? Does it have some extra singing, some backing vocals? Maybe a guitar or two. Bass guitar, keyboard, drum kit. A uh, drum kit's got lots of different instruments in it, like the bass drum played with the pedal, the cymbals and the, the other drums. And um, you could break that down into looking at all the different layers of just one drum kit. And the way they work together is what creates the texture of the music. So, number five, element number five, is ideas and patterns. Again, you probably know a lot of this stuff already. But in most music, you know, ideas, tunes or rhythms are repeated. So if you think of a song, you have a tune for the verse, a different tune for the chorus. But the chorus comes back, the verse comes back. So those ideas are repeated. I think that's true. When composers want listeners to remember their music easily, they use just a few ideas and repeat them a lot. So a composer is a person who writes music, makes up music for all sorts of things. There's lots of things. You can go to a concert and listen to some music that a composer has written. You can do that for composers who have lived hundreds of years ago. Or you could do it for composers who have uh, just written the music, especially for that concert. Composers write music for film, TV, adverts on TV, um, theme tunes for your favourite TV programmes, for games that you play, all sorts of things. Music for people to dance to, and music to help people relax. All sorts of reasons for composers to write music. I think it's true. When composers want to stop listeners getting bored, they change to a different idea or tune. So if you're listening to the same tune over and over again, or the same idea over and over again, you might get a bit bored. So I think it's a good idea for the composer to change the tune or to put in a different idea to make the music more interesting so that you don't switch off and stop listening. True. 
Okay, well done. So now let's do a little quiz to see how much of that you remembered. But you can rewind the video to check on things that you might have missed or forgotten. So you can pause the video to give yourself time to write down the question and the answer, or you can write the answer in full sentence, or if you want to do it quickly, you can write down the number of the question, one, and whichever letter you think is the right answer. First question, which of these art forms is not time-based? So which one doesn't need time to take it in, to listen to it, to watch it? A, music, B, art, for example, paintings, C, dance, and D, drama. I'm going to go on to the next question and then I'll come back to do all of the answers at the end. Question number two. Which of these words is a steady sound like a pulse? A. Rhythm B. Melody C. Meter or D. Beat Question number three. Which of these tells us how the beats are grouped together in a piece of music. A beat, B meter, or time signature is the other word for that. C rhythm, or D melody. Question number four. A mixture of long and short sounds put together is called a, a rhythm, B, a beat, C, melody, or D, harmony. A mixture of long and short sounds put together. Question number five. The word for different types of sounds is A, rhythm, B, instruments, C, wood, D. Tambra. Question number six. The glockenspiel is a pitched percussion instrument that makes A. Wooden sounds, B. Metal sounds, C. Plastic sounds, or D. Paper sounds. So, which one was the glockenspiel? Question number seven. The word for pitch going up is a descending, B melody, C ascending, or D texture. The one for going up. Question number eight. Which, of one, which one of these is the word that musicians use for the layers of sound in a piece of music? A. Timbre. B. Texture. C. Melody. Or D. Chords. Don't forget, you can always uh, rewind the video and have a look if you've missed or forgotten anything. Question number nine. Which one of these is often one of the layers in a pop song? A. Pipe organ. B. Tuba. C. Violin. Or D. Drum kit. Which one do you usually find in a pop song? And the last question, number 10. When composers want people to remember their music easily, they A. Use lots of changing ideas. B. Use only one short idea and never change it. 
or C, use just a few ideas and repeat them a lot. D, never repeat any ideas. OK, so let's go through the answers and see how well you did. This is the first question. Which of these art forms is not time-based? So music takes time to listen to from beginning to end. Some pieces of music are very long. Some pieces are quite short. Art, paintings, can you look at that straight away and see it all in one go? Maybe not all the detail but you can see it, it's up to you how long you spend looking at it. Dance, well, that's got to take some time. Drama, a play or a, or a show has to take some time from start to finish. So I think it's B. Correct, your score is 100%. Well done. Question number two. Which of these words is a steady sound like a pulse? I think, if you remember, it's beat. Hope you all got that one. Correct. Question number three. Which of these tells us how the beats are grouped together in a piece of music? So it's grouping together in patterns like fours and threes. And the word is meter. The other word was time signature, which is the numbers that you see at the start of a piece of music. Question number four. A mixture of long and short sounds put together is called. Now this is the difference between rhythm and beat. Beat is not long and short sounds. They're all the same. Steady, even sound. But rhythm is when you have long and short sounds put together. Makes it more exciting. The word for different types of sound. Now that's the funny word there. Tambra funny because it doesn't look like we would say it in English. So rhythm, instruments, wood or timbre. Timbre was the word that I used for different types of sounds, like wooden and metal sounds. We're doing really well, 100%, halfway there. The glockenspiel is a pitched percussion instrument. Pitched percussion means that you can play different notes on it. That's how we can go up and down on it. That's how we can play like... Le the glockenspiel is a pitched percussion instrument that makes wooden sounds, metal sounds, plastic sounds or paper sounds. So Glockenspiel, if you have a really good memory, or if you rewind the video to have a look, metal sounds. Okay, now pitched percussion, I just wanted to explain that a little bit. Percussion is an instrument that you hit with a beater or sometimes with your hand. Pitched means that it has different notes on it. So if you hit a drum, like a, a conga, with, a, with your hand, it has one pitch. But if you have a glockenspiel or a xylophone, you can play all the different notes that you can on a, on a keyboard. And the word for pitch going up is, question number seven, pitch going up is, descending is going down, melody is a melody, ascending was the word for going up, two new words that we might have learned learnt today, ascending and descending. Remember you can use them for other things that go up and go down as well. There we go. Question number eight. Which of these is the word that musicians use for the layers of sound in a piece of music? Well, we've had timbre, that was the different types of sound. Texture was the other word. That might be another new word for you today as well. Well done. Question number nine. Which of these is often one of the layers in a pop song? I know some pop songs with a pipe organ in and a tuba in and a violin, but they're not very many. 
most drum, most most songs I know, most pop songs I know, do have a drum kit in them. And then finally, when composers want people to remember their music easily, they use lots of changing ideas. Well, if the ideas change a lot, we probably wouldn't remember any of them. Use only one short idea and never change it. Well, I guess we would remember that, but it would be a pretty boring piece of music. But it would be a pretty boring piece of music. C. Use just a few ideas and repeat them a lot. That makes sense. Let's try that one. And that's the right answer. So, I wonder how well you did on that. If there are things that you're not too sure about, don't forget you can always watch the video again or just pick or just rewind and watch bits of it. Thank you for learning.